Good luck watching the news bulletin on Bangal Promenade and now the headlines as usual. Prime Minister Fat Min Ching underlies need to optimize resources from SOEs. National Assembly Standing Committee is touching a session in Russia. And later on, Member of European Parliament highly values Vietnam's treasure. It is necessary to promote the leading role of state-owned enterprises in forming and expanding production, supply and value chains, Prime Minister Phan Minh Chin stated during a working session with the party committee of the Center Enterprises Block in Hanoi on July 12. The Prime Minister described the state-owned enterprises as an important material force of the economy and hit the strong performance of the businesses, especially during COVID-19 period. He affirmed the party organization of the Central Enterprises Block is a key force of the state-owned enterprises in their restructuring, especially in optimizing their resources at some $423 billion. Pointing to a number of current shortcomings of sterile enterprises, Prime Minister Ching asked the party committee of the Central Enterprises Bloc to continue to renovate party leadership and principles while speeding up the restructuring, restructuring and renovation of sterile enterprises. At the same time, it's necessary to optimize resources in capital, land, trademark, tradition and history of the enterprises while closely managing state capital and property in line with the law, the government leader stressed. The Central Enterprises Block comprises nine economic groups, 20 corporations, six banks, one state-run financial institution and a total of 930 affiliated enterprises. The 13th session of the National Assembly Standing Committee concluded on July 12 after one and a half days of working. National Assembly Chairman Vương Đình Huệ affirmed that the session's contents were considered truly and won high consensus of the full-time deputies. During this session, the National Assembly Standing Committee discussed and made decisions on the chain of purpose of land use to create a space for implementing the North-South Expressway project in the 2021 to 2025 period. A report on the construction progress of Chung Sun Dong Road was also put on table. It also considered a report on the legislature's ombudsman work in May and June and a draft resolution on the supervision of legal documents issued by national assembly agencies, among others. The first session of the fifth legislature is scheduled to last from October 20th to November 18th. During the session, seven draft laws were expected to approve and six others will be scrutinized for the first time. Jan Gerardin, a member of the European Parliament, has highly valued Vietnam's role and statue, as well as its relations with the EU and the Czech Republic, during a recent meeting with some Vietnamese ambassadors. Talking to the Vietnamese ambassadors to the Czech Republic, Poland, Slovakia and Belgium at the event in Mykolov town of the Czech Republic, Gerardin said the European Parliament has passed a report on the Indo-Pacific strategy in the area of trade and investment, which highlights the situation in the Indo-Pacific region and stressed the importance of the EU's free trade agreements with partners in the region the European Union. There is no other country in ASEAN having that. It gives Vietnam advantage uh, and it gives Vietnam a privileged position and I very much hope that Vietnam will be able to use these opportunities for prosperity, stability and security of the country. He also said he's impressed with Vietnam's economic development achievements, particularly the GDRP growth of 7.72% in the second quarter and inflation kept under 3%. Gerardine is also the vice chair of the European Parliament's Committee on International Trade. The 
war is far behind us, but for our veterans, memories of the years standing shoulder to shoulder with volunteers, Vietnamese soldiers and experts in the war against a common enemy for independence and freedom for the people of the two countries have never faded. For them, the memories are unforgettable. It has been a long time since these two veterans had the opportunity to visit the area where they fought and shared joy and sorrow with Vietnamese soldiers who went to Laos on international duty. I have never forgotten that during the battle, the Lao soldiers and Vietnamese volunteers and experts considered each other as siblings, fighting side by side. The Plain of Jazz, Sien Quang, is located along what was then the transportation route from North Vietnam to the Indochinese battlefield. For many years, the U.S. invaders constantly bombed the area. And here, the Vietnam Lao comradeship and brotherhood matured over the years. Vietnamese soldiers were responsible for protecting the Plains of Jazz especially protecting the supply of food and weapons from Vietnam to Long Pet in Laos. The enemy used bombs, mines, artillery and aircraft to bombard the area, but the Vietnamese and Laos troops successfully defended the route. The solidarity was incredibly strong. Growing up as a communications soldier after 40 years in the army, and retiring in 2006, Lieutenant Colonel Kamdi Vanaha still can't forget the names of the Vietnamese experts. Thanks to the enthusiastic, dedicated teaching of Vietnamese experts, my communications company was awarded the hero title, and many of its members later had opportunities to study in Vietnam and Russia. Decades have passed, and the dance bomb creators on the Plain of Jazz have become a famous tourist site. Visitors to this place can not only learn about the mystery of the thousands of years old jazz, but also about the fighting alliance and the special Laos-Vietnam relationship. After four years of negotiations on July 11th, a protocol on phytosanitary requirements for Vietnamese durian exported to China was signed, an important condition for Vietnamese durian to have a sustainable import market. The protocol signed by Minister of Agriculture and Redevelopment Lei Ming Huan will be sent to the General Administration of Customs of China and published on its portal together with list of eligible durian growing areas and packing facilities of Vietnam. The fruit will be allowed to officially be exported to China after the protocol is publicized. The protocol stipulates that all growing areas registered for export to China must build a quality management and traceability system, apply good agricultural practices, and ensure conditions such as cleaning the cultivating garden and away from the source of pollution, immediately removing the fallen and rotten fruits. In addition, they must apply an integrated pest management program, including pest surveillance, chemical or biological control, and other farming practices. China is still the largest importer of Vietnamese durian, but this fruit is mainly exported to China via border gates. Vietnam's 2021 durian output is estimated at 600,000 tons, or 15 percent year-on-year. The country now has about 50,000 to 60,000 hectares of durian growing for official export. The number of unemployed people in Vietnam stood at nearly 1.1 million in the first half of 2022, down 47,600 year-on-year, according to the China Statistic Office. There were about 410,300 people aged 15 to 24 without a job during the period, accounting for 36.8 percent of the total figure. The unemployment rate among persons of this age group living in urban areas were 9.21 percent, a year-on-year -year drop of 0 0.76 percentage point. The underemployed population was estimated at over 1.1 million, a year-on-year -year decrease of 30,200. 
The number of employed people aged 15 and above reached 15.3 million from January to June, a 417,000 from a year earlier. The figure included 18.6 million in urban areas of 762,000. The employment of the second quarter went up both quarter on quarter and year on year, with a considerable rise reported in the service sector. The northern city of Haiphong has attracted over $755 million in foreign direct investment to local industrial parks and economic zones in the first half of 2022. According to the Haiphong Economic Zone Authority, the amount was channeled into 21 new FDI projects and 18 existing ones. It's equivalent to 56.2% of the FDI register in the same period last year. At present, Industrial parks and economic zones in the city are home to 438 FDI projects with $22.07 billion in total and 195 domestic investment projects with $12.57 billion. From now to 2025, 15 industrial parks in the city will be expanded to 6,418 hectares from the current 674 hectares. The latest of them is the Antang Industrial Park, for which an infrastructure construction and business project recently received an investment certificate from the authority. The Antang Industrial Park, one of the key projects in Haiphong, is expected to create more space to attract secondary investors and boost the development of different industries and services in the city. The Vietnam National Administration of Tourism has launched a video clip, Vietnam Travel to Love, Wonders of Vietnam to Introduce Beautiful Destinations of Vietnam. The clip is expected to bring impressive and unforgettable experiences to visitors. The video, which lasts 1 minute and 31 seconds, offers viewers a brief tour of renowned places in Vietnam, such as Ban Shuk Waterfall in Cao Bang Province, Chiang An Scenic Landscape Complex in Ninh Bình Province, which is called Ha Long Bay on land with numerous caves, mountains, trees and historic relics, and the two UNESCO-recognized World Cultural Heritage of the Ancient Capital in Thu Thien Huế Province and the Eastern Sanctuary in Quang Nam Province. In addition to admiring the beautiful natural scenery and exploring the country's history and culture, visitors also enjoy lively and attractive destinations at leading modern resorts and entertainment facilities in Phu Quoc and Nha Chiang cities. According to the administration, the development of new and unique products and refreshment of existing ones will be a key factor in attracting tourists from all over the world in the context that the tourism industry is striving to recover quickly. The clip is part of a program promoting Vietnamese tourism on YouTube, organized by the administration with support from Vinpearl and Google. In the first six months of 2022, the tourism industry has served 60.8 million domestic visitors, up 1.9 times of the same period last year. An online exhibition featuring Indochina as a wonderland has been launched by the National Archive Center No. 1. The exhibition, opened on July 9th, consists of three sections highlighting the wonder in the land, its beaches and mountains. On display are images and documents on famous tourist attractions built in the French in three Indochinese countries, Vietnam, Laos and Cambodia since the 19th century, namely Sapa, Tam Dao, Ba Vi in northern Vietnam, Ba Na, Bạch Mã, Đà Lạt in central Vietnam, Bo Kok in Cambodia and Park Song in Laos. The exhibition takes visitors on a virtual train departing from the Hanoi station, going back in time to discover seemingly familiar landmarks. Its carriages represent the countries of Indochina, showcasing archives of their typical wonders through attractive introductions. And that's crop up our news bulletin. Thanks for watching. As soon as time.